a small child or with a child uh, that he did with us. And I'm not saying he talks down to the kids. I'm not saying that. But it's just different. Well, you, you wouldn't be able to communicate or get a child to speak to you unless they can trust you. Right. So you have to have this, uh, oh, uh, persona. You yeah. have to have this uh, feeling uh, of tr being trusted. Well, you know, it was interesting because when I was in the restaurant business, uh, I, I loved to talk to my tables. I mean, that's I, I didn't take orders. I didn't cook. I, I wasn't capable or qualified to do any of that. I cleaned tables. And when you clean tables, you talk to people. And whenever there would be a young person at the table, I would move down to their level. So if they were sitting in a high chair, I would get down on my knee and eyeball to eyeball. Or if they were at a tall table, I'd usually just back up and bend down a little bit. And I found it so much easier to talk with children uh, or younger people when you were eyeball to eyeball. Well, in his office, he sits in a, it, it's, not a it's not a kid's chair, but he sits at a child's level. He doesn't sit above the child. So the child's not looking up, and he's not looking down. Um, I just think he's a fascinating guy. And we could have gone on. Guys, we could have gone on for three hours and never run out of something. Now, you two are young dads, Maddie and Brad. So what did you learn about something that you're going to apply with your own kids? Well, the, the only thing that – I shouldn't say the only thing, but one of the things that I took from him, and I – not in any way trying to downplay the importance of the mother, but I think in our society today, fathers have the opportunity in a lot of places to take a more upfront position with their children. Fathers are not the way he made it almost appear to me as, oh, we come in from work in our suit and, you know, uh, Beaver, you're you know, wait till your dad gets home. I think yeah. we have a much more hands-on role with our, our children, or at least I, I pray that I do. And I do agree with him in that there are separate roles for the father and the mother. And I know that um, the young ladies that are in my family, while the, at first they don't appreciate it, I make sure that the young men that are going to be a part of their lives understand that there's boundaries that I will enforce if they want to be, you know, dating my daughter or stepdaughter. And, and I think that's important. I think that's something that our culture has, has moved away from where, um, a story I won't tell it on air, but where the, my stepdaughter was going to go out with a, a boy and she wanted me to, to, to be nice to him. And I told her, absolutely not. There's no, I don't, want him to to not have a fear of me because that way he won't he will respect you and I, I think our culture is has left our our daughters kind of out there without yeah. that, that guardian role now you have a young daughter she's yeah. what eight eight um it just reinforced a lot of things actually about i think um and again we're in a i'm in a diff not it's difficult in a way because we're not She's not part of a normal family in the sense of... Right. What's dad's normal? Lived, mama. Yeah, lives with mom and dad comes to visit and she comes down to us. So I I know there's going to be a time where qu she'll ask questions. She's a bright little thing. But she ne she hasn't up to this point, but which surprises me. But that I, I wonder what goes on. In, I'm, I mean, I have a great relationship with her and she's a lovely girl, little girl. And she has a great relationship with my wife and my stepdaughter and all her family and then my family in England. She's got like lots of roots and lots of family and she she has great relationships with all of them. But I there will I'm sure there'll come a time where why is why is this going on, Dad? Why does why yeah. why this? And I'm prepared I'm I'm and the the thing is with me, I'm I've thought about I've thought about what I'm what I'm gonna tell her. I'll probably tell her the truth. Well I think you have to. The mm. truth sets us free. Well yeah, but the truth could be could be quite hurtful to her. Father Tattoo, what about you? You've got two small boys. What are they, six and four? Uh, seven and uh, going to be six here in a few uh, okay. weeks. So. All right. So, uh, you know. Uh, you learn anything with Dr. Sure. I, I actually would take the other opinion. Uh, I would probably agree with Dr. Dooney. I was just watching a uh, sermon series uh, from Vody Bauckham about uh, the role of the father in the household. And I, I think uh, society society benefits from a father coming home from a work, from work and a mother, a mother being the nurturer. I think uh, 
uh, we're, we're made that way. I see that in my wife's personality. Maybe I put it not, I used the wrong words. I think that they're, each has their role, and the roles are both very important. I, yeah, I, I think that he did overstate, but he was talking about the early developmental thing, and I know my wife really focused in on that time because we were aware of that window. And uh, my children, uh, by the grace of God, we're the people that go to the uh, the children's conference and they tell us how happy our kids are and want to know what we're doing at home because our kids are happy and, and always wanting to participate in class. And, you know, it's a real joy to us to have that. And the more I think about it, the more I think about the biblical view of uh, marriage and, and fatherhood and stuff like that. And I, I do see the mother is the nurturer there. So I, I, I like that. And I think that's part of what we miss out in, in our today's culture when we have uh, divorces and stuff like that. And I'm not trying to insult people that have had divorces. I know I've never been through it. And there's certainly reasons to get divorced. Uh, but uh, I think that's a, one of the, the real negatives. I mean, a lot of my friends are uh, from divorced families and even as adults, they're not functioning well. And that's something to think about and it's a lasting impact. And it's, it's probably undoable. Well, and I just think it's important that uh, uh, any family who has a child who's struggling um, if there's not a pastor, I think the first place you go is a pastor. Uh, but if don't, don't be afraid to go to a medical professional like Dr. Dudney, uh, because they're trained to handle uh, some things that you and I as parents aren't equipped to handle. I mean, after all, what did we do to prepare to become parents? You know, really, most of us not much. These guys are professionals, so I hope we take the time to look those people up. All right, Maddie. Thanks for coming in, yeah, and, and thanks for not bringing any fattening, teasing no. food today. <laughs> I appreciate that. Next and week, mate. Next week. Army Brad, nice to have you here. We'll see no you next problem. week. One of these days you'll get a real job, and then you won't be able hopefully, to join us. Hopefully. Uh, Bob, thanks for coming in. Your show tonight? No. Nope. All right. And Father Tattoo, good show last night. Uh, and we will see you on Monday. To those of you at home, uh, stay tuned for True Blue starring Michael Mudloff. And uh, people ask sometimes, what can I do for you, Mac? You, you do a show and you share so many people with us and tell stories. What can I do for you? There's just one thing. It's a four-letter word. Pray. <laughs>